one of you guys asked me uh, about digital and analog and if you're a beginner and trying to like choose you know the the new digital systems are pretty amazing just to, to give you a little bit of background of where i'm coming from i started off with analog and i thought analog was terrible also and most of that just had to do with not really understanding how everything worked not knowing how to like use the right channels even the first flight i went on you can you can see every single one of my flights is on this channel but if you go to my first flight i was literally like at the channel next to the channel i was supposed to be on and i'm flying and it was it was horrible but that's not how it's supposed to look and when i fly analog now years later it looks so much better than it did in the beginning and I was just, well, there's a, there's a guy, Phantom FPV. He just made a video kind of about this, like with uh, all the new systems. So you could check him out and check out that video. Cause you can see how amazing the new systems are. But if you're just talking about like best bang for buck performance, I, I don't think anything beats analog. And I spent a year flying Vistas. I spent a year flying like DJI and I broke so many of them and it just cost a lot. My first O3 units, I broke within a month. And then that kind of just sent me back to just analog using footage from a GoPro. Because the footage you get from a GoPro, regardless of what system you're on, is going to look better. And lots of people are flying these systems with GoPros on them. So you, you can do that too. But if you just want the best bang for your buck and just kind of like the best performance, to me, analog still kind of wins. Like for instance, you could get a, the, I don't know if you can even get the Nano Pro 32 VTXs anymore because they're like gone, like sold out all the time. But that would be to me like the best like value weight uh, VTX. I sell VTXs for $45 and they're 1.6 watt. And that's what I use myself. I fly them at 800 milliwatts. And I would just want to show you the difference in experience that I get and why I actually prefer this over DJI, at least the old system. So this is what the experience is like on a Vista with the OG camera. And uh, we, this is just the flight out of the, uh, out of the goggles. And it looks nice. Also, like this... this this is not a good example of where you should be flying and what you should be doing. Uh, this is just me being me. <laughs> and uh, in Toronto, it's it's strange because you actually can't fly at the park, but you can go into the middle of city and dive buildings, which you shouldn't do, especially if you're not uh, comfortable with your system. Uh, especially like. Any, anything that you fly anywhere sketchy, you should first fly in a field, make sure everything is working well. But that's not really what we're talking about today. Today we're looking at the, uh, the Vista. And this is, this is on my aluminum frame that I'm testing. And you can see that it's kind of like, th there's little bits of glitches. And, and when you're flying, the delay is there and you can kind of... Um, Flying like this actually makes me feel a loss of confidence. And, and, I, and I, I think that this is interesting because when you look at like Phantom FPV and how amazing he flies and everything, for him, he feels like when you, uh, being able to see everything gives him more confidence. And to me, I almost feel the opposite. Like being able to see everything nicely, it, it is nice. It's nice to see. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see not being able to have that solid latency and not be able to like really feel that to me that takes away my confidence and that makes me feel like a worse pilot so w when i have analog and i fly i actually feel way more confident flying than with this i don't know if you can see the stutters and it, it's something that's really uh weird to explain if you can't feel it because there's tons of people like I, I just literally watched like everyone that would be on vistas and stuff just be like it's so great you don't feel anything like but i think some of us are a lot more sensitive to like 
everything. Like even this drone, this drone is flying like garbage. I don't know if it's because it's like freezing outside or it's just the tune or it's an aluminum frame. It's 2.5 millimeters thick, but it is, it's still fun, but it's freezing, it's windy, and there's a whole pile of things going on here. And it, it, it does, it stutters. And that, that bothers me. Yes, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> and I, I like to feel like every, well, the more connected you are to your drone, to me, the more the better you're going to be able to fly because it just, it feels like it's an extension of you and you don't stutter, you know, when you walk around and do things like you see your hand, it moves, it's instant. And, and with analog, I feel that, that instantness, that connection, it feels a lot stronger than this. When, when you're diving and doing this kind of stuff, you, you don't want any delay. You don't, uh, I've had times also on the DJI system where I've flown into a like you know a um a soccer a soccer net I've flown into a soccer net pole and I, I didn't fly into the soccer net pole like I was just I didn't see myself hitting it it was just like the video cut out because I smashed it straight into a pole and it, it's just that's what I've I guess hated about the system it's like I want to be able to make my own mistakes if, if I screw up something because I did something dumb or whatever, then sure. But when I have an accident because the system was delayed, because it couldn't, like, I guess, keep up with me or something, that I don't like. So the, the O3 is different, though. Like, the O3 actually, what, what I find one of the big differences is with the O3, even if there's still latency, there isn't that like stuttering of the video. Whereas with the Vistas, like there is, there's this like constant where it's, it has to catch up. And this is flying in like low latency mode also. So the people that are able to fly on DJI and do all sorts of tricks and stuff, and make it look so like smooth and good, like good for them. Or people that say that they, they want to use DJI for work and then they'll fly analog for fun or whatever. Like even, even for work, I'd much rather have an analog quad that is just not stuttering and indoors you can build super light with analog. So I have, a GoPro that flies on a 2S battery and it flies for like six minutes, no problems. And I'd rather fly that than having to carry around like a Synalog Cine with a uh, digital system and 6S <laughs> batteries and 6S motors. And uh, I, I think it's a lot better to go super light and have a lot of control than to go the whole power overcompensating for weight because you can control the weight with power but you don't need all that power you can get rid of all that power make it super light and then have something that's really controllable uh, like so, so the digital experience for me it it feels like it holds me back slows me down and cripples me and that's that's me and that's also talking about vistas specifically this video is like <laughs> uh, i think a few years too late but i just yeah i want to i want to just kind of show you the experience that i've had from that and this isn't the greatest example either because this this quad's not flying very well yeah okay let's go to analog now is it as clear as a uh, digital? No, but is it like unflyable? Like that I'm missing out on details. I feel like I can see everything. I can see these wires. You see those wires there? I can see the um, the electric wires 
I think just as good as you can see whatever. Like I see everything that I need to see, but there's also spatial awareness and spatial awareness I think is a much more important skill than anything else. Like knowing where everything is, like sometimes regardless of what system you're on, you're not going to see the power lines maybe fast enough. But if you're like, I know where all the power lines are before you fly, you look at the place. Uh, it's like you think about, um, my, my dad is Austrian. So he was really into like skiing and skiers and the skiers before they go down the hill, have the opportunity to like walk up and down the hill and look at everything and like spy the, uh, the course before running it. And I think that in FPV, you should never go and fly somewhere without being aware of your surroundings. You should know which way the wires are running. Are they running horizontally? Are they running vertically? Uh, and if you know where all those things are, then you can prepare for that. And then see, so this, this is what it looks like for me on analog. The video at the end looks a lot better in uh, GoPro. And sometimes I think about putting this footage with the GoPro footage, but I just feel like it, it takes away because then you don't get to look at the beautiful GoPro footage. And it's crazy because I built the channel off of garbage footage, but it, the same scene, the moment you show people HD footage, it just looks so much more beautiful. And you add the music and everything, and it makes them feel in a way that this doesn't. Like, it just analog. The experience of flight is in no way, to me, any worse than the digital experience of flight. To me, the digital experience of flight is actually worse than the analog experience of flight. But there, there's no arguing. Yeah, it looks a lot nicer when you're flying. So I've always looked at it like kind of like a luxury, like you get to have the luxury of seeing <laughs> when you're flying. And for me, I, I don't, I'd rather have that like pure connection where, okay, it doesn't look as good, but it feels amazing. And, and this feels amazing. I'm having so much fun and I have more fun flying this quad, even with a GoPro on it, than I do flying any like digital quad. Almost always, whatever I fly, I always come back to this quad. Like this is the one that I wanna like fly all the time. And I, I think that I see enough. And, and that, I don't know, not even the seeing, it's just the feeling, the knowing where everything is, knowing that the input that I put into the controller is going to move the drone the right way. That's what gives me the most confidence. Someone else just asked me, I came in halfway through the video, where does HD zero come into the analog versus digital wars? So basically HD zero is the best. If you're racing, if you're going to be racing and if you're going to be racing, HD zero is the way to go. If you're going to go to the park, and just be park flying HD zero is fine, but HD zero is just not reliable enough for me and the way that I fly. I can't risk going up to the top of a building like that and then losing my video signal. And I've had that happen to me before and it's cost me a GoPro and it's cost me my quads and it's just the signal is not strong enough to penetrate. It's not strong enough to like, you know, bounce the way that analog does HD zero is perfect for racing it's great great community great system and everything but it, it's like a tool and that's not the tool that i want to use when i'm going in a in a sketchy place and same thing with vistas what, vistas you can lose your picture and it takes too long to come back with analog it can get sketchy but i can always fly through it i like i can get it back the the big problem with digital systems is that when they do cut out you don't catch them with analog. You can usually save yourself with HD zero. When it goes to rainbow screen, <laughs> you're, you're done. And then when it comes to walk snail, I've never liked walk snail. I've always said 
Walk Snail is a worse DJI, so. Like, well, if you have DJI, there's no reason to get Walk Snail. What are you waiting Unless for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! Okay, yeah, so I dove this building and it dove fine. In this flight, you're seeing the HD0 discus flying and the analog quad was a discus. The DJI one was a discus. It's all I really fly. I have a website all about sub 250 drones. So check it out. You might enjoy it. It's a great resource when you're looking for things in the sub 250 category. And another thing that's weird with HD0, I'm on the VRX. So I'm not on like the, the actual goggles. So this might make a difference, but apparently the VRX has better penetration anyways. Now, apparently the VRX, like the Fat Shark one, has better penetration than the goggles do, but they, it has that added latency through the HDMI. And when I'm flying HD0, like some people say when they fly DJI, they get sick from the latency or whatever. I don't get sick when I fly DJI, I just don't like it. But when I fly HD0 for a while, it makes me feel sick. And I don't... It might even be the smell of like the VRX, like those electronics get warm and you can kind of smell them. I don't know if that's what it is or just the the way the latency is that it's like it's less than DJI, but there's still something there and it just messes with my mind or something. But I, when I fly D, HD0 too much, it makes me feel sick. And now there's this gap at this building right here. So I should be able to fly through there, no problem. And if, if it was analog or DJI, I'm sure I could have just gone through there. And I didn't hit anything, okay? Look. Like, what the heck? And, and there goes my, uh, my GoPro 10. I did end up getting my drone back. But uh, the guy that had, had the unit, he took the memory card out. And uh, yeah, they gave me back my drone and I signed a piece of paper saying I'll never fly there again. But that there's a GoPro 10 that I didn't need to lose. Yeah, the GoPro 10 broke. I got my drone back, but it's just like my GoPro 10 broke because of hardware that was not reliable. So. When it comes to racing, HD0 is great. But when it comes to doing, like, if you can't go behind a tiny pillar, like, no thank you. <laughs> and it costs more. So it, it, it costs more than analog. And to me, analog outperforms it. And is like, I can smash the crap out of my analog stuff for like a year before it breaks. With HD0, sometimes you look at it the wrong way. <laughs> those are like MIPI cables and everything, but that's the same with DJI. And after breaking, I think like 10 Vistas in a year, and then those 203 units, it's just an analog and a GoPro, and I'm happy.